Amazing, ladies and gentlemen, we made it. Maybe. Okay, here we are. Can everyone hear me? We all we're 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 here. We got thumbs up. We're good. Okay, cool. Apologies for the delay and for the late uh, late starts. Small miscommunication between myself and Brenda. She is off today, and I, frankly, completely forgot that was the case. And so I needed to figure out how to actually start this meeting. So here we are. No, nothing gained, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? No harm, no foul. I'm not sure what the euphemism is that we're going to use today. Uh, but I know that today we want to talk about pre-selling your course. Um, and Christopher, you ha had this question specifically. You actually put it on the table for us last time. But essentially what we're talking about here is, you know, how do you put your course out there for people to sign up for it? Uh, and you can market it and you know get people excited about it, but maybe you have a launch date that is in the future so that you you want to start getting people into your course and you want to build that energy and build that momentum and build that excitement. Um, Christopher, let me ask you this. Would you prefer for me to kind of walk through uh, uh, you know, sort of an example process of that, or would you like to put Thank your you questions mean. on the table first? Yeah, you can you can do the walkthrough so it's generic for everyone. And okay. uh, I could probably just share some. It's, it might be personalized to me, but um, so how I envision it, let's say I want to start my course the first week, the first week in June, um, probably two weeks prior, I'll open enrollment, do some uh, marketing campaign. People come on to the, the sales page, they can purchase. Um, I probably also need help with setting it up that they can enter and there's these, these actions they can do, these free actions they can do, um, but the course starts on the first week in June. And uh, once it starts, I'd like to close, um, how to say, close the, the purchasing or the, the order form from persons coming into the, into the course because it started. However, I can capture them onto a waiting list or something like that. So, I can let them know you can they can access me through one on one coaching. Okay. I'm just getting things ready. Uh I Michelle, I saw you yesterday in um Fantastic. Awesome. So here we are. So you'll see that I have put in the chat. It's probably on your right hand side. Maya is on right hand side. I look like Brenda in the chat, just so you know, because I did log into her account for it. So um, she's uh, she's here. And just so everybody knows and, and that you're aware, we are recording this um, just so that uh, just so everybody's aware of that. Um, but the article in our help files about, you know, what we recommend for you doing and, you know, some, some tips on how to pre-sell your course are in that article there. I'm going to share my screen here. I think I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So here's my screen. This is what my uh, account, you know, this is so, this is what your account looks like every time you log in. Um, essentially, just walk through the a couple of steps. Um, and, and remember, our goal here, just to reiterate it for everyone, is what if I want to create a course? I want to have all of the course pieces, you know, ready to go and whatnot, but I'm, I want to pre sell it. I want to get students in the course, get some excitement, get some energy going before the actual content itself it launches. So I'm going to use this gamified membership down here, which is quite frankly, it is all it is, is the template, the gamified membership template. I just created a new course um, uh, and, and use that membership, uh, the membership template to do that. The one, one feature that you're going to notice um, immediately is that it is in the published courses uh, section of my account, right? So one criteria that you need to make sure of is that, you know, if you're going to pre-sell a course, you must publish it. It has to be visible to the world. Students have to be able to sign up for it. And if it's in a draft format or it's not published, you can't pre-sell it, right? So that's uh, that's a, a key criterion in that that you have to have a, you have to have a paid plan and it has to be published. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into the course now. I'm going to click on Gamified Membership. And we're making the assumption in this demonstration here that I have added my course content, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Sometimes people will, and if we talk about uh, some of the marketing best, best practices that we have out there is maybe you want to, again, use one of our templates to quickly create an order page and maybe put a new course idea uh, you know, out there to the world to see if it will fly. Um, for example, let's just say, you know, you you have a new idea for, um, yeah, again, for a membership, you know, like um, how to how to, how to to grow your business, right? Let's just call it a new membership. And you're not sure if people are interested in that in your list. What you could do is use one of our templates. Again, use this membership template. You don't actually have to put any of the content in there. Um, go down and customize your course pages so that you can, you know, you would, you would customize your order page and your home page. Why those two? Let's stop for one second there. You'd want to customize your order page because this is your landing page. This is where you would send all of your traffic to make the sale, right? You bring people in and you'd make the case for why this new membership is fantastic, why they're going to get uh, incredible value, what uh, problems are they going to solve, um, those kinds of things, right? What pain points are they going to alleviate from their life? And assuming you make the case correctly and there is interest, people will start to sign up, right? They will put their email address in their name. Um, if you if you choose to have you know have them do a prepayment, they would do that there as well. But let's just say for this case, you know, you're just going to have people get on a waiting list, right? So they're they're going to get on that. Um, uh, you're going to let them do that for free. The reason why you also need a homepage is because as soon as they sign up, we take them to the homepage. Right. And if we go back to this, um, you know, our our uh, our help file on, you know, can you pre-sell your course? One of the things that we want to make sure that you do or that you're prepared for is that once a student signs up for your course, you're going to take to the homepage. And this is an opportunity for you to generate more excitement. So you have a video, like a welcome video that thanks them for coming, that explains the course overview, that talks about what they're, you know, what they're going to be learning in this membership, et cetera. And you can also give them some pre-course or pre-membership activities like joining your Facebook group or getting on your email list or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that, you know, you kind of create some excitement and create some energy and that's all they will be able to do. So let's look at, so let me, let me pause right there and just make sure that that makes sense for everyone about why those two pages are important and what you would do in, in terms of a pre-sale. Hmm. That makes sense. All right. I mean, I usually ask these questions in the negative. If that doesn't make sense, you know, raise your hand, let me know. Uh, Lindsay, you had put the question out there. It says, how far ahead can you pre-sale? You can pre-sale pretty far ahead. Uh, the real question is, is you know, do you have like a, a marketing campaign that's going to bubble up to that, right? In the in the age of the of of TikTok, I'm always I'm always a little worry wary of thinking too far ahead or planning too far ahead or thinking that we need to start a campaign too far ahead simply because unless you're extremely structured and you have, you know, a funnel or, you know, a, a cam you know, campaigns like email campaigns and social campaigns and whatnot that you're going to build out that's going to really crescendo towards that launch, um, do, you know, launching something uh, too far out it, you know, can take too long, but let's go into course content. So in order to answer Lindsay's question, as well as what's the next step, we have to actually set up our course so that the content will not be available until the date we want it to be available. So here I am in step number three, add course content. In this case, we only have these two trainings because again, I used our template. This is the stuff that comes with the template. And then what you'll want to do after you've added your training blurb and you know your training name, maybe added your video for that, the content, you're gonna to wanna to change the release date. Now, this is for Lindsay. You know, I could go, you know, I could I could release this as far out in the future as I want, right? I could go into 2025, 2020, you know. Um, but again, it's really, again, you just really kind of think about, do I have a campaign that's going to support going out that far? And also you have to think about, will, will learners sign up or potential learners sign up? And is it too long where they may lose interest or they may ask for a refund or they may pull back or whatever? That's all other strategy for another call. But to, but to bring us back to where we are, I'm going into the very first training and the very first module. I'm saying, I don't want to release this 
until a time in the future. Today is May 15th that we're recording this, uh, 2024. I'm going to say that I want to release this on May uh, 21st, so next Monday. Oh, sorry, that's next Tuesday. Let's let, let's release it next Monday, May uh, May 20th. And then uh, I'm going to choose to release it at, on a specific time. I'm here in Mexico City, so you can see I'm saying at 6 a.m. on Mexico City time, I want to release it. And the only thing, the, re, the how I got there was by choosing to release it on a specific date. Many of our courses, uh, you'll remember, had this first module released immediately so that when somebody signs up, they're immediately put into the course so they can start learning and start moving. But many of us choose on a specific date. In the um, uh, excuse me, in in the in the the, the help file here, there's also uh, information about what happens if you want to use the after X days or in the nth week, right? So let's just say that you want to. Uh, I know I'm going down a little bit of a sidetrack here for just one second, but bear with me. Let's say that you want to have people come into your course or they're in your course already and you want them to you know, view mod, you know, trainings one, two, and three or module number one and they, you want to get them excited, but you don't. You want to make sure that you hold off releasing other stuff until sometime in the future. This is, you know, this is one, of the, one of the ways that you can do that. You can say, don't release module number two until you know, 30 days afterwards or, you know, the 10th week of the course or something like that. The only, the, the basically the major release, the, or the major difference in this style or this, um, uh, this method of releasing content is that you're going to have to use tags in order to release that content properly so that it becomes visible to your students when, um, when it is ready, rather than just using the method that we're using here, which is a date. Sorry, did somebody have a question? Or is that just a great sneeze? I have Lindsay, a question go ahead. about the tags. Yes. So I think the way that I want to release my course is have a pre-sell it, but then it's going to be on evergreen once it starts. And so I want to be able to, um, how do you do that with the tags? Is that too long for you to explain? Because I'm thinking the way that I want to release it on Evergreen is after seven days, I release this. After 14 days, I release this. After 21 days, I release this. But I can't pre-sell it with that being the only setting because it will release too soon. Does that make sense? Sure. There's layers of complication here in just that what you may find is that you have uh, your course is created. I'm just sort of thinking this through in my head, right? And having having your content released after, you know, for example, after X days, right? You say module one is, you know, um, on May 15th, and then module two is on May 21st, and then May 28th, and et cetera, like on a weekly basis. That's a no-brainer. That's pretty easy. Um, and so for any student that comes in, that is the that is the path that they will follow, regardless of when they sign up. Does that make sense? Yes. So does that provide enough uh, discernment or enough differentiation for you in like or, you know in terms well, of because for an evergreen, that's the reason why we built it that way was so that for example, our expiring mini course, right? If you start it today, you get three days starting today. If I start it next week, I get three days, but starting next week. But we're both in the same course, and and the content is available. In, in a unique way for us. Yeah, Even so that makes sense once once the course is live it makes sense, but I'm I don't understand how to do it. Like let's say I want to pre-sell it for a month before I go evergreen. Steven, then can I then jump in? How do I delay that? That's sure. Susan, go right go right ahead. Um you okay, you could you're going to drip your content week by week by week. But right. to get to that first one, you could put the first one as draft. So it would, and then have it where it would release, um, because that one, oh, wait, let me think. Then you'd have to do the, hold on. I see what you mean. You could put it as draft, but then would that trigger the other 17 days after four day after two see, weeks? I, mean, I think it would just be simpler. I, I understand you want to pre-sell it, Lindsay, which totally makes sense. But I would just put the first one to release on a you know on a specific day, and then um, 
you know, once you're, yeah. once you're, once everyone who's on the waiting list is then now taken into that, you would then uh -huh. come back and just change this to immediately. So then anybody else who then signs up for the course, they would receive module number one, and then it would be seven, you know, every, every week after that. Yeah. So if you, when, okay, so maybe I didn't understand originally when you said that. So right now I have it set up as being after X days, but you're saying I need to change it to be on the date that module one is. On this the is, specific yes. Date. So to accomplish your specific goal, which, and let's just reiterate for everyone on the recording, whoever listens to this, you want to pre-sell a course and let's just say it's going to just going to start on June 1st, just so we have a nice easy date. So from May 15th to June 4th, anybody can sign up. Right. So I would come in and I would say for my, you know, training number one will not be released until June 1st. Right. Correct. Then on June 1st, everybody who's in the course, they've, you know, they've, they've signed up, they've seen the homepage, they've been waiting for it on June 4th. First, the experience engine would start for all of those people. Right. They would receive like, Hey, here's an email. It says, Hey, it's ready for you. Go, go ahead and do it. They'd receive a text or whatever it is, whatever you have set up. And they would go in there. I would wait. I would then wait for, 24 hours or so. And then I would come back to module number one and I would just change it to immediately. Then anybody else who signs up for the course would then start immediately. And then they would still go through that, you know, they would, the, 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 the future content would re be released every week for them based on when they started. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't have to change the, release dates for everything it's just for the very first that's the way i would do it correct module so like let's say so let's say i do module one for june 1st if i have the setting for module two to be after seven days that is dependent on the june 1st date correct correct okay okay so that makes sense okay yeah because it's what's going to happen is they're all going to be tagged as or or in our system. And Susan, please tell me if I'm talking at a school here and I've got it completely wrong, but um, what would happen is they would all start on that June 1st and then our, our, our engine would say, okay, in seven days, release the next one in seven days, release the next one. Right. But then when you come back and you change the, the course for anybody else new who signs up, they would have a new marker on there. It's not a tag. I don't want to use that word because this is in our database somewhere. Right. Um, but we, they would be then more because, okay, they've started it. And then seven days from now released in seven days. So that's, okay. I think that would be the simplest way to do it. Okay. That makes sense. Great. Awesome. So dialing it back. Can I ask a really quick question? Sorry. Um, you can ask a at the beginning, question. you had, thank you. Um, at the beginning, you had mentioned about tags. So there's nothing that we would need to do with tags in order to set it up in the way that you just described for Lindsay, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. The only time you need to use tags is if you have existing content um, and you want to use that nth day thing if you have existing content. Thank you. And if I've got it wrong, I will correct myself. But that is, I believe, is the correct way to do it. I don't want to distract you from where you're going with this, sure. but I have a question. Uh, my scenario that I'm envisioning is a little different than what Lindsay was just describing. I'd like to have an immediate release of kind of an intro module, right? And then have a scheduled workshop that would be live and have mm -hmm. a specific date for that. And, you know, some people will have two weeks in between there before and some people might have three days in mm, sure some people might have one hour sure i get it yeah. um and then the workshop i'm envisioning is kind of a combination of live zoom sessions and then they might have uh, okay now go do this module in the in the uh, experience module right and then we'll come mm. back together at this time you know that kind of thing and then probably a follow-up Q and A session that would be scheduled. Also, of course, it, mm -hmm. it sounds like I probably don't need to use tags for that either, right? No, and so um, let's just. Um, I'm going to save this just to back out for a second, and so let's just say this is your course, right? That we're looking at, and you have these, you know, 
your, you know, your training number one is what you want people to get immediately, you know, in the, as soon as they sign up. And then your live call is what you, you want them to see on a specific date. Right. And so all we would do is you would, for the release date for your very first training is you'd say, give it to them immediately. You know, you would, you would put the release timing as immediately so that when, as soon as they sign up, that training is available and they can do it. Right. Does that make sense? I think I lost Susan for a second there. Susan, you still with us? I can see Lindsay, so I know that it's not my interwebs. Anyway, I'm going to keep re recording this so that we see it. So basically what you do is you would, um, it looks like we lost Susan, unfortunately. I think her internet went down. Um, you would do the first one immediately, and then your second module, uh, sorry, your second training, you would have the release timing as a specific date. And in this case, you could say, you know, July 1st. Um, and then when you save it in that way, no one will be able to see or use that training until July 1st. And so everybody would come in, immediately have access to that. So some people may have one month or so before the the next training. And some people may join in and only have a day or a few hours before that. That's that's just the nature of how that setup would work. Okay. Uh, um, Lade, can I jump in for us? Please, second? Gabrielle, go right in. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, just uh, adding something. Mm, okay. This works when all the students start at the same date. And that way they will all have the, the same time to perform the, the course. So when we use tax, it's for uh, make it mm, more, more uh, flexible for the student. So in this case, the student that it's not uh, jumping in, in in the same time, in the same date, it's going to have the same time for, for itself to fulfill sure, sure. the, the course. That can be achieved by the step five and the, the experience engine. You will unlock any model at, uh, after uh, some um, task the student has already done, for example. Sure. That way you can set that up so the student doesn't have to um, wait until the next start date to get into the course and have the experiences or the or the trainings released and have the, the time enough to do the trainings and and have the, the full course. Thank I you. don't know if that make any sense. <laughs> sure, it makes sense. So basically you're the a third opportunity or a third path in order to custom release content is by utilizing the experience engine. And by using the, using the experience engine, either through the actions and points, right? So if they did the work, you could give them a tag here. Um, or you could put it into uh, the experience engine it says when they complete training number one, give them this tag. And uh, on that way, training. exactly. And in that way, you could say, say only when they have this tag will module number two be released. And only when they have these tags will module three be released. So it's that's another way to drip content that is not date or time dependent. It's progress. Exactly. Dependent. Yeah. Does that make exactly sense? That. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's, thank you very much, Gabriel. I appreciate, I really appreciate that. And so that is a progress dependent drip schedule. We now have, we have a, uh, you know, a date dependent drip schedule. So we have, you know, started on a specific date and go for it. And then um, what uh, Susan was talking about, where it's like release content immediately, but then wait on a, until a specific date for the next content. Um, again, as I've, I've often said on these calls, experience by can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. So we have lots of lots of different options there. Now I have, sorry, a lot, kind of lost my space here where I was um, where I was going along, but I wanted to actually demonstrate what this will look like for a learner coming in in that first scenario. So in the very first scenario we started talking about was we want to be able to have an, a landing page. And then from that landing page, we want to be able to have a home page so that, you know, once they sign up, they'll go to that home page and um, they won't be able to progress uh, until a certain time. So I'm going to set the first training here to June 1st. And I'm going to say, you know, let's just say 7 a.m. And I'm going to save that. So right now we have the first training has been set to that time. 
um, this course has been published, right? So we all, we see that. And um, now I'm gonna take the, uh, sorry, oops, pushed the wrong button there. Uh, I'm going to take the order page. Just gonna move my zoom tools here. Uh, I'm gonna copy the link there. And I need to actually share my screen differently so that you can see that page. Give me one second. So we're going to share screen differently. So what I've done, and this is one way that we, what we encourage you to test your course is by using an incognito or in private browser, right? So that it doesn't have cookies in it. It doesn't track you, those kinds of things. Um, it's one way to get at least a pretty good sense of what a student experience would be like. So you can see that um, I've opened up an incognito browser. Um, I have put the order form in the URL. And so when I go to that order form, again, this is all just from the membership template. So it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been updated by me in any way, but we should be able to come down here and we should say, okay, great, look, here's our order form. So I'll put in, And another, um, another best practice that I want you to observe for those who haven't seen, in the order form, I'm putting in a fake name and then I'm using my email address because it's a Google account, I'm able to put you know uh, the plus after my name. So usually my email address is steven at experienceify.com, um, but I'm gonna put steven plus Adam Smile AS at, at at Experienceify, and that's going to create a create an account. And it's a valid email address, but then I know that it's a fake email address that you know it can be discarded later on. Um, you know, rather than Mexico, I'll put a uh, don't call that number. Um, I don't have a coupon, but I'm going to say I'm going to agree to the terms of service, and I accept the processing idea, and then I'm going to complete the purchase. And so for a student they will then come into the homepage. This is why a homepage is necessary because we'll have the homepage here. This would be your welcome video to, to, to bring them in and say, wow, thanks, this is so great. You know, the course is starting on June 1st and I'm excited to have you here. We're gonna do some amazing things like climb this really, really high mountain with lots of snow on it. Um, and then we have, you know, some potential actions that you can ask them to do, like go to your Facebook group or sign up for your email list or you know download a worksheet and get ready for it or maybe do some pre-work uh, for your thought. But you'll notice that down here at the bottom, there is no, there are no, um, uh, there's no trainings that they can jump into. There's nothing there released. On June 1st at the bottom, that first training will appear down here at the bottom and they'll be able to jump into it. And, and again, the experience engine will start and you will probably have um, set up an email that will get sent to them and says, hey, look, the first module ready for you, the first training is ready for you. So that is a, that's the overview of not only pre-selling, you know, sort of the pieces that you need, but then also, you know, several different ways to go about it. Um, I believe Lindsay had another question here in the chat. Let me just look. If you schedule the pre-actions or the homepage schedule for release immediately, and um, then module one released June one. Well, module two will be dependent on June one. I think this is what we described earlier. Yeah. We, yeah. We, are, still, we, had, we already I, answered this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure the homepage, I've got like seven or eight pre actions for module one. That that being really, I don't even think you schedule that. It's just always on your page. I was just going to say, yeah, there, there is no schedule, right? Like as soon as they get to the homepage, those pre actions are there. And okay. whatever you have on the homepage, you can make things appear and disappear. So you could, <laughs> if you wanted to get really complicated, you could, on the homepage, you could hide this block in the middle here with the pre-actions. Mm -hmm. uh, you could make it tag dependent, right? So you could you could say, only show this block to people with the tag June 1st or whatever it is. And then on June 1st, those pre-actions would open up. But of course, if they're pre-actions, you want them to do them before the course starts. Um, sure. but you could, but that's one way for you to automatically modify the homepage or your single training page or any of the, any other pages, um, by, through, by using tags and say, you know, you could set up your homepage so that it looks different and different blocks appear for the pre-sale and for the time when it's been released to the world. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's mm -hmm. what you would use tags for in, in that case as well. Christopher, I want to uh, return back to you. Have we... 
covered your questions thus far because you were the you were the person who so nicely brought this particular uh, topic up. I think Chris went to get lunch. Susan, you're back. I wasn't gone. Oh, oh, sorry. I meant the mm -hmm. other, I meant the other Susan Joy. Oh, yes, it, I came right back, but for some reason my internet hiccuped and then came right back in. So, okay, so I just want to turn back. Did did you happen to hear my explanation for your question? Um. I think I heard some of it, but I, I think I can figure it out. Um, I'll re I'll recap for you at the end of the day that what we're what we're um, I'm just going to reshare the other screen so that you can see it. Um, you're not looking at this screen. Uh, your you wanted to have people come into the order page, sign up for your course and go to your homepage and then immediately have training number one available. Yep. And in order to do that, we would set this to immediately for yep. your first training. We would save that. And then what we would do is we for training number two, which is your live call, your live um, uh, sort of cohort or whatever it is, you would then set the release timing for that for a specific date in the future. Right. So everyone who comes into the course will immediately be given that first that first training but no one can go to do set training number two until, in this case, July 1st. Right. And that's what you would do for then the next one as well. You said that you had like another coaching session or something. Does that make sense? Right. But the other part that I wasn't sure about, and I can test this and play around with it, but I'm envisioning in that live call for the second one, mm -hmm. I might have two short modules that they go do on their own and then come back together with the group totally possible yeah it sounds like it should be so i'll, mm -hmm. I'll just test that out but yeah uh, yeah and and we just i i always um just want to make sure that we're super clear as well um because we just all kind of use different words for the right. same things right and so for us the modules are the major topics right so you see here, module one has trainings, which are the tactical trainings underneath them. Right. Um, and so in this case, you know, you would probably only have one module with several trainings. But if every call you wanted to have is a different module, and then, you know, maybe it's a totally different topic, it's a different subject, maybe you want to divide into modules, and then that's how you would divide your course up. It's just, you have to kind of think through the architecture of how you want to divide the content up, because that will... It won't change a whole lot, but it's just changed kind of how some how some of the flow works. Yeah, because if if training two is the live call, but that's divided up, maybe you know maybe we do an hour of live call and then they go have half an hour to take this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. study module, and then we come back together for another hour. Can that all be part of? training two or no because i have to have something separate for the self-study part right and right that, and so in that case it sounds like you'd want to use modules so i think that your live call would be module number two would be the live call and then you would build those two short sessions in there okay. you, you'd, you'd have everybody come in and join the call and you'd say look you know you already have access to these two short sessions here's the url to go go to do them and, and take them and then the live call would still be the live call, right? It'd be your Zoom link or whatever, and people could come right. back later. And to the Zoom link. And exactly. So, exactly. So, yeah, that was one question I had is, do I make that release of that self-study module be dependent on them attending the live, or do I share the link with them during the Zoom session? It sounds like I could do it either way, probably. You could do it, yeah. I, you could do it either way. It's really up to you. Yeah. All right. I got some things to play around with, but... Um, Super cool. It sounds like it's possible if I get it scheduled the way I want. So awesome. thank you. No worries. Christopher, you are back. Did we I just want to make sure we answered your questions or if you had specific um specific things you wanted to look at on this call? Um yeah, so I guess we have I, I had to um take a call uh minute ago. So yes, coming back to it. It's about opening the order form, um, setting it for a specific time, as you mentioned, then 
uh, not allowing persons to enter, but um, inviting them to a wait list. Okay. So that's what we've been talking about. I, I think we've covered that in, in, in the whole time, right? Because you're going to create your order page, um, the order page becomes not only the place where people sign up, but they're automatically put onto that wait list as soon as they sign up, right? What you do with their email address, right? Like it depends on what you want to use a wait list for. Um, as soon as they sign up, their their name, their information, their their email address is in your database. It's in your account. And so then, and also they're tagged with your course. So later on, um, you could have your experience engine set up. So it says, you know, anybody who, had, who is, who is currently enrolled in, you know, um, you know, membership mastery 101, you know, uh, send them this email that it's now open and available. So you don't even have to build a new, you don't have to even build anything new for that. Does that make sense? Okay. So that would mean accepting payment and they come into the course where it doesn't start, right? So what I do, I don't want if 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 they so you want, yeah right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah if if the I if I start it's a live um course so that's why I want a cohort but if they somehow get into get my uh, order form it should say this is no longer for purchase. Um, click here to join the, the waiting list. How can I? Right. How can I have that there? You're not allowed to purchase, but put a link to join for the next quote because you can't join once I begin. Okay, I'm just looking. I'm looking it up um, right now. Um... You can hide the info for the credit card. Um, just uh, create a link. You mean on the order page, Gabriel? Yep. You can achieve that by CS code. You okay. Hide the, the info for the credit card because so if there... a student is is already seeing that page. And, and he or she sees the the um, info or the the model to fill to fill the the info for the credit card or the bank account. They will think, oh, it's available and I can buy it. But if you hide that one and it's only the the button or a, or maybe a link, you can uh, achieve that that way. We could also make you can also just make the block of the sign up invisible, right? You could change the the block to never, never being visible, and so that they won't be they wouldn't be able to sign up. I, I was I was thinking like uh, the most difficult thing, and you came out with a simple idea. <laughs> yeah, that's also a good. <laughs> sure, no okay, problem. So I understand that. So once I decide uh, the course has started. I can just make that the order form, the the the, the credit card details uh, part only not visible, and uh, put in a link. Put a link to join the waiting list. Exactly, and so yeah, so we we'd have to kind of just sort of think through. Um, oh, sorry, I thought I was sharing my screen the whole time. I apologize. I'm over here like clicking these things, and you guys aren't even watching it. Uh. So I'm on the I'm on the uh, the order page here. If I come down to the order form on here and I click on edit content, um, I'm able to change the visibility of this block from always so that it's always available to everyone. Um, and I, I change it to never. If I change it to never, that means this entire block disappears, right? And so um, everything on the order page will still be there, but no one can sign up because there's just no way for them to sign up. Another alternative would be to, um, you can see it says between date times, so you can uh, only have it available for, you know, hey, this this course is only, you know, you have to sign up during this week. You could have it during a certain week, or you could um, have it shown always, but to only people with certain tags, right? So you would give people uh, a tag on their account. So if, if you know, this is a second course uh, or or something like that, I'm also thinking through this right now. Um, 
Christopher, you know, one way you might want to do is you could create a pre-course, right? So an order page and only a home page, right? So that people come in and only have to put in their their email address and their name. And it's a free, you know, it's a free sign up. And they sign up and they go to their the home page, and that's where you welcome them. You have them do some pre-actions. And then the moment you want them to go sign up and pay, right? Pay for the paid course, you could then release, uh, you know, have a release email go out and say, hey, look, the 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 paid course is available. Go sign up now, right? Um, and that would be one way to get people into your course um, without having to make them pay up front. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. This this is um this is on point. This part here with the block visibility for that time space. So two weeks out, I can start my marketing campaign. So it's automated. Then the course starts. It disappears and. Below, I can put a link. Okay, so this the cohort, the, this this term has already started. Um, here's a link for my EMC. Here's a link for my one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, here's a link for the waiting list for the next cohort. So, exactly. That makes sense. Cool. Yeah. So it sounds like you have, uh, you know, at least two or three different options for. Really, at the end of the day, it's like, what? How do you want your flow to look like? And you know, how you know, um, I'm always the biggest fan of keep it as simple as possible and um, have as little friction as possible, right? So um, the more the more things that we ask our students to do, the more likely they are to not sign up, the more likely are they, you know, to to bounce off and go away. Um, and the more friction that we have to get there, again, uh, the more likely that they'll never make it to the order page or they'll ne they'll never make it to the credit card. Lindsay, you have just asked, what about the email scheduling for a pre-sale and then a June 1st evergreen setup? So in the experience engine, the experience engine is tied to the modules or it's tied to the trainings that you have or it's tied to the release of the course. And so um, again, you're gonna have to think this through. Sorry, I'll share my screen again. I'm going to go to step number five, the secret sauce. But this this particular one right here. So you know when the user is added to this course, right? That is triggered by someone signing up for your course. So regardless if they do it, uh, you know, in your pre-sale uh, or then when the evergreen is, we're just looking for when somebody puts in their email address and their name. And then once we see that, the engine sees that, that's when they do all of the actions underneath it, right? The welcome email and stuff like that. So you shouldn't have to change that because it's triggered by someone signing up, not by, it's not dependent upon the dates um, or those kinds of things. And then and then the, uh, the experiences that happen after that, you just need to make sure that they are not date dependent. They're, they're either action or module dependent, right? So that they're being triggered by somebody uh, completing a module or completing a training or completing an action rather than saying on June 1st, do this, you know, do this action. So what about like, take for instance, that second email that says no student login for one week. Mm -hmm. Would that, is that based on when the user was added to the course? Cause like, let's say there's three weeks until the course starts. And so they're I mean, there are preset actions, but are pre-actions for them to do. But what is that second email dependent upon? You can see right here, it's the starting trigger. It says that they have not logged in for one week, right? And so we would want to change this during your pre-sale or turn it off, right? The an, an easier, um, sorry, an easier way to think about that is you could just go over here to the button and you'll you'll disable the experience during your pre-sale and then mm -hmm. you would turn and then you would just turn it back on when the pre-sale is over so that then you have that student rescue um, email that would go out if they have not logged in in one week so do that for every email that is uh that's not module dependent correct mm -hmm. okay i gotta write that down 
Yeah, no worries. And and then I'm obviously we're recording this. I'm going to put this up on uh, for those of you who've been on several calls like Michelle and and Chris and 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 whatnot. Um, I have uploaded the last four office hours uh, to our help page. So those are there now. Um, I will process this one as soon as I can. So it'll probably be about 48 hours before I get it up there so that all of this information will be up there as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, Lindsay, I think one of the, the the critical things would be just, you know, do yourself a favor and do some testing just to make sure that, again, the flow works the way that you want it to. Um, and that's that's by creating a, you know, a dummy student account and actually signing up for your course and going, you know, and seeing what, hey, what email do I receive? When do I receive it? And and whatnot. If you don't have, obviously, if you don't have the luxury of being able to sit and wait for three weeks, <laughs> you know, to see if you get an email, um, that's when you, uh, you, uh, you just have to maybe change the dates uh, on some things so that, you know, instead of weeks, it becomes days or it becomes hours so that uh, you can test how things works. Super. That's great. Uh, we're, we're about five minutes to the top of the hour here. And unfortunately, today I do need to stop on time. Um, is there any kind of maybe one last quick question we want to answer? Hey, can I get one little comment in about this? Absolutely. This is one of my favorite things. The pre-sale is so great. It, go in, play with it because you could you could ha if you have a month out, you could hide your different different sections or different blocks and have information so they could come back and it keeps them excited. You could do a a benchmark that shows them where they're starting and then you use the benchmark at the end and you know as I said you could keep them really engaged uh by doing blocks with with tags for the first week or you have three weeks to it then a week later you add another it's just such a great feature i'm just such i'm so glad he had this um this open office about this um definitely go in and play with it because it's such a good feature super cool i just had to do my little my little um spew on that As you can tell susan is an yeah. enthusiastic member of the experience it i love it it's yes. wonderful Everyone and this is just one of the best. This is this is really one of the best um, features. Super cool. Well, and with that said, I'm going to thank everyone for coming today. Um, our next office hours will be uh, tomorrow, I believe. And is that going to be a different topic than what this one was? This is Cor the first time Cor I've come to one of these. So Correct. Um, let's see. Um, so tomorrow it is at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so 8 p.m. New York time. 7 p.m. for me. Yep. Um, you know, we've tried to, again, put it on different dates and different times for different parts of the world. Um, and I don't have, let me see, I will just pull up the. Yeah, they started showing up on my Gmail calendar and I didn't know what they were for at first. So I figured I, I better go in there and see what this is about. I might be missing something. That's good. I'm glad I'm, I would love to have more and more people like you show up. So the next one is we're going to talk about the experience engine. We don't have a particular topic. Uh, but um, we can certainly pick one or um, I can I can figure one out to. That's fine. Bring... Show up and... Sounds good. Yeah, we know that lots of people have some some confusion around how the experience in, engine works and whatnot. So I'll be giving an overview of the engine and then um, you know, what are celebrations, how to customize celebrations? You know, how does the timeline work in the in the experience engine and those kinds of things? So good. thank you much, everybody. We will see you tomorrow evening. Yeah, well, at least evening my time morning for some people. So. Thank you.